this plane of understanding, static patterns of value are divided into four systems. Inorganic patterns, biological patterns, social patterns, intellectual patterns. They are exhaustive. That's all there are. If you construct an encyclopedia of four topics, inorganic, biological, social, and intellectual, nothing is left out. No quote unquote thing that is. Only dynamic quality, which cannot be described in any encyclopedia, is absent. But although the four systems are exhaustive, they are not exclusive. They all operate at the same time and in ways that are almost independent of each other. This classification of patterns is not very original, but the metaphysics of quality allows an assertion about them that is unusual. It says they are not continuous. They are discrete. They have very little to do with one another. Although each higher level is built on a lower one, it's not an extension of that lower level. Quite the contrary. The higher level can often be seen to be in opposition to the lower level, dominating it, controlling it where possible for its own purposes. And, and then so there's, there's a great deal of independence between the layers, but they're also interdependent and even contentious. I feel like we're getting into alchemy, actually, because it, it talks about this refinement process, right? Like you must refine inorganic reality and then refine biological reality. You have to be very clean. And then this propagates up into refinement of social reality and refinement of the ideas. So it's almost like there's this polishing of the mirror process. And in the, the Philosopher's Stone, by the way, we've been talking about this contention between opposites generating reality in a way. The Philosopher's Stone is said to be that thing that unifies opposites. My, okay, so here's a question that I, I find myself asking a lot. What are we actually describing here? Are we describing or attempting to describe fundamental reality or are we describing our psyche as like kind of a filter that's interpreting. And I, I guess it's very difficult maybe for us to even disentangle the two, if at all possible, because all we can say is, you know, what we can say about consciousness, I guess what, and when you th conceive of the metaphysics of quality, are you thinking is like, this is the, you know, absolute basis of all that exists? Or is this something that like, we're just really looking at the structure of the psyche? And um, maybe this is the same question about archetypes, by the way. I don't like our archetypes, something that exists and permeate the universe, or is this just something that's encoded in us? Well, I, I believe or are they after, the reading, <laughs> after, after reading King Warrior, Magician Lover uh, by Robert Moore, which is a psychology book that's, you know, I would say not spiritual, but let's say it, it deals with the concepts of archetypes as being these forces or these voltages that run through the psyche. Um, when we think about the Holy Trinity, when we think about uh, the metaphysics of quality, and it, it talks about the, the four tiers, I, I believe that we're using different terminology to describe the same let's say the same thing. I, I believe that the idea of the Holy Trinity is a representation of what Moore describes as the warrior, the magician, and the lover. Mm. And I'll have to, let me break that down. So the warrior, the magician, and the lover map exactly on to the categories that Piercing described in the metaphysics of quality, which is that the warrior would be biological, because the warrior is the instinctive force within you that wants to biologically preserve uh, itself. So it will aggress against a physical foe. It will physically maintain and preserve its own uh, form against uh, obstruction. The lover is the social category because it's, let's say, the archetypal force of communion with others mm -hmm. and the capacity to, to uh, value other biological entities. A warrior in itself will only see another biological entity with the uh, uh, with the perception of dominant domination and, and forcefulness. So, you know, pure pure warrior archetype would just be like the the 
a very effective warrior, but also a pillager and a rapist, right? Because, you know, like yeah. you hear about yeah. when you hear about archetypes being overly channeled in war scenarios, where you hear about horrific uh. situations where where soldiers are amped up on warrior energy and then they're sent into a you know some some tribe somewhere or some small village in Vietnam and and what you get out of that is is the complete absence of lover archetype or complete absence of mm -hmm. magician archetype so if the if the lover archetype is the social uh let's say social voltage that runs through these the the static patterns of the social higher, uh, social category then the magician mm -hmm is the intellectual patterns, which is the neocortex, which is the capacity to, to plan and to self-reflect and to consider things and to be future-oriented mm -hmm. and, and to, to think about the universe as an abstraction, to, um, to simulate mentally mm -hmm. scenarios without acting in the biological realm. Yes. And... What, what I believe the metaphysics of quality does is articulate the architecture of how those voltages are... Well, if, if the archetypes are the voltage, then the metaphysics of quality is a description of the circuit boards. Ah, okay, okay. So I believe that what we're actually doing with the metaphysics of quality is coming up with a metaphorical way to describe the voltages of the Jungian archetypes and the Jungian archetypes are a description of of the the fire that f that 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 um, drives the engine that animates life exactly exactly beyond human life and beyond human life and the archetypes are as as they they're one i would say that they're one level of abstraction below god you know, ah, the, yes, the, yes, the gods. We got, if, they are the gods, but they if 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 the sing if the singular unity of the world is God, then yes. the archetypes are the first, let's say, um, abstraction that can be separated from that singularity. Right, 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 right. And yeah. all the metaphysics of quality is is a metaphysical instantiation of those spiritual forces of of what Jung describes as the as the disembodied archetypes. The the fire that fuels action. But even then, even then I'm using an analogy. We have to use yes. an analogy. They're the fire that fuels action. They they can they are like the the concept of of you know Allah. You can only uh, point to it. Um yes. and in Robert Moore's book, there is a fourth archetype, which is the king. And I believe yes. that the king, I believe that he he makes a mistake by considering there there to be four archetypes. I believe that the king archetype is the emergent property of the balancing of the magician, the lover, and the warrior, of because the, the, the king, uh, the king is all three, and the king, yes. like in any kingdom, a wise king takes the the guidance of the council. his uh, court, of his council, yeah. and that means that yeah. in any situation, he's careful to deliberate whether he uses the force of the warrior, the compassion uh -huh. of the lover, or the or the strategy of the magician, uh -huh. and yes. and the successful king is the one that it internalizes and integrates the three in a holy trinity balance. So ah, I think that okay. I think that Robert Moore Robert Moore is using the he's describing the archetypes in a biblical sense and the metaphysics of quality is describing the bible in a metaphysical sense. So they mm. they're all in they're all in what's that word you use that Peterson uses not it's the the multivariate thing but it's the consilience Con consilience yeah consilience. consilience. Yeah, um, so, so then the king is the the god in the Trinitarian formula of yes, yeah, okay, wow, that's really and then, and then if we if we strip away time and we we recognize that time itself is not not linear construction and all these mm -hmm. things are operating in parallel, mm -hmm. then and and it goes to John Wheeler's conception that the universe electrons, for example, can move both backwards and forwards in time, which means yes. that time itself is is a strange yes. a strange medium. Um, that means that the king is both the emergent property of and the creator of right. the conditions that he emerges yes. from. Yes, so it's, yes, it's yes, yes. Because, because he draws, he draws the he both emerges from, but creates the conditions for his own emergence. And this is consciousness. If, and this is consciousness. And consciousness, that's why it's an infinity. Yeah. It's an infinity. Consciousness it, it evolves from some inorganic pattern that led up to our existence, but now we also co-create our own evolution right through the construction of tools and markets and all these other things 
Yeah. And all of those things are 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 a um yeah, their life their life and this goes back to that what we talked about before. Value is what the world is created up of, but you need a conscious actor to value things. Yes. And people that participate in the marketplace of value want to be valued. Yes. So we're both looking to create value and looking to be valued. And you know, one of the 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 principles of psychology, especially in child psychology, and this operates on multiple levels, biologically, socially, intellectually, is that do you know in in ICU units in in children's wards, they've got cases when it, when a child is born prematurely, there's uh, kind of incubation chambers yes, where yes. they're kept in a in a sealed unit, and the sealed unit has yes. these um, glove holes for your hands to go into, and I I yes. originally thought that the reason for those hand entrance points was so that they could you know perform um, medical interventions or whatever like injections I don't know um, yeah. I only found out recently that the uh, a child between the age of zero months and three months if it isn't given continual physical being physically yes. touched the, the nervous system quite simply f- just fails it will just die yes. the, the, right. a baby will die and at the biological level what that speaks to is that if a if a if a um, if the dynamic quality that's 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 being channeled through, let's say the biological static patterns that have that have stabilized themselves in the form of this baby, mm. if that dynamic quality isn't witnessed by an external force, then then it simply won't try and come through the portal of the baby. So, right. at a biological level, the baby needs to be biologically valued and witnessed right. and and recognized. It needs exchange. And the form. It needs exchange. It yeah. needs exchange. It needs God. Yeah. Literally needs good. And the next tier up from that, there's physical contact, but then there's the the idea of um, being mirrored, that, mm. that a, a child won't learn emotional literacy, such mm-hmm. as empathy, right. unless it exchanges through the act of mirroring with yes. an adult, which yes. is why you, you make silly faces and you go peekaboo and you... Yeah. Even, for example, we, I think we talked about this before, but the, 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 the game of... Um, like hide and seek where you put your your hand above your eyes and then you go peekaboo yes. and the baby chuckles yeah um that a baby before it's developed a, a complex mapping of how to recognize face uh, a face and facial um uh kind of articulation and, and emotions it only understands and recognizes the two the two pupil points mm-hmm. and that's its kind of its compass for it it's looking around the room for the two eyes and when you mm. put your hand above your eyes as far as the baby's conscious uh, experience of the world goes, all it's seeing is, is two dots because it hasn't yet understood how to differentiate all the other signals in its visual stimulus. It sees the two dots and right. the two dots disappear. It doesn't see a hand covering a face. So as far as the baby's concerned, you have as an entity in its world disappeared when the hand comes above the eyes. And when you come back, what the baby is being taught is that you're going to return so it's being conditioned like to see that you are reliable. You are going to disappear, then come back, disappear, then come back, yeah. disappear, then come back. And the baby builds a, a sense of exchange that it's going to be looked after and it's going to not be deserted. And I'm going from a tangent here, but yeah. that's yeah. Bio- that's the biological aspect of exchange that allows the, the baby to you know come into being. Develop independence, yeah. Develop independence is the reason I'm talking about all of this is because I believe that at the heart of the universe is the idea of observing and witnessing each other because everyone wants to be seen, everyone wants yes. to be understood, everyone wants yes. to be recognized, everyone wants to be confirmed in their reality by others. And then as, as you get older, that recognition process becomes more and more um, advanced. You know, once you get into the social aspect, you want to be recognized for your social cues, you want to be yes. recognized for your ideas, you want to be recognized for your contributions. And I think that one of the biggest problems we have in society today is is that we don't have, let's say, the institutions or the rituals for recognition and witnessing young people, and that's where disillusionment right. and nihilism comes in because people feel they're they're invisible, and in being feeling invisible is probably the most existentially threatening thing in the world, and I just find it fascinating that the subatomic at the subatomic level, a particle will be potential unless it's observed and then it's it will only quite literally it will only exist if you observe it which is fascinating to me i just find that a fascinating expression of 
of the fundamental principle of a human psyche. And if a human psyche is is all of the tiers of the metaphysics of quality operating in unison, in parallel, simultaneously, yes. we're the junction. We're the junction box where all of the voltages are coming through. Right. Which gets back to your your king uh, as kind of the meta archetype. Because isn't the etymology of king ken kinship, like in a relationship? Yeah. And so the idea of a kingdom, you can look at it through, you can you can interpret that through the lens of the master of of the 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 domain. But actually, the etymological root can mean the dominion of of sovereign kin, mm. because king is derived from kin. Mm -hmm. A king and a kingdom is a dominion of kinship. And if we take mm. the idea that that the kingdom itself is comprised of the archetypes of the warriors, the lovers, and the magicians, right. then the king is the harmonious organizing principle of those archetypes. Yes. So yes, 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 that yes. would mean that the above the intellectual, above the social, above the biological, above the yes. inorganic, above all of those is the organizing principle. I, and and that's the that's the 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 let's say the conscious, the dynamic consciousness, the ongoing dynamic consciousness that integrates all of those voltages simultaneously. Okay, here's where my fucking mind is going berserk here. So we're, we're talking about these, these organizing principles that transcend time, right? So, so we know in physics that light, the photon, is that which transcends time, right? It, it's moving at the speed of light, which means it is unaffected by time, let's say. And so what I'm thinking of here, I'm getting back to this, the Plato's cave thing a little bit here is what if light is the shadow of value, which is, you know, pure dynamic quality, if you will, in physical reality, you know? And so here's the thing, is it, is it, okay, a number of things, the inorganic patterns that are in us, everything heavier than helium and hydrogen in the universe, which we are carbon-based life are manufactured in the hearts of stars, right? Which are the generators of light in the universe. A star is the contention of gravity and nuclear force, right? There's a dynamic equilibrium of gravity and nuclear force that causes it to be alive, to persist over time. And it either goes supernova or black hole at some point. But so the, the very inorganic principles or, or elements that constitute us are born in this dynamic tension. Uh, the, the light itself is the organizing principle, right? We not only like the tree clearly is organizing itself towards the sunlight. We as human beings are organizing ourselves towards the sunlight, whether we know it or not, right? We, the, the, the prey eats the tree, the predator eats the prey, and then we eat the predator, whatever the circle of life is. We're organizing ourselves to 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 this energy, and it's it's almost like light. Then is you know to to um, it's the quality of leadership in the world. You know, like to be the light of a nation, like to or to be enlightened, is to say that you're closer to this dynamic quality, and then the static patterns should organize themselves to it to get to a higher resolution, effectively. So to have a static pattern that is uh, more closely reflective of this pure nature of light. Um, and so you have leaders on top of a community, right? So it's like the, the, the medium, again, between heaven and earth, to use the biblical phrase, is light then value, right? Or is it the closest thing, not to say that it is value, but light is the highest thing we can conceive of or perceive the closest reflection or highest resolution image of dynamic quality, you know, and it also exhibits these strange paradoxes, right? Like it's a wave and it's a particle. It's kind of like water and fire. It's a unity of opposites in a lot of ways. And it just seems related. It seems like if we're, we keep coming back to this time. This issue of time is what makes us different than that. We understand time in a way other animals don't, but it's also circular. So the only thing that could conceive of time as circular is something transcendent. And the only thing transcendent to time that we know of is light. And then light is this organizing principle that's 
propagating throughout all reality. When it comes to the idea of light as, as let's say, the... Because Piercing sort of goes on to describe that the universe is just data. Yeah. Um, and, right. that, and that we are actually, even the conception of us using light is is a strange feature because what we're actually describing is our experience of a certain field of data yeah yeah the light again if, if it's everything's so let's say let's take that and say okay the whole universe is data or information again to get the most accurate portrayal of that data set light is the highest resolution thing possible right so even even if light was a static pattern, I just for instance, let's say the universe is say say the universe is pure dynamic quality, which is information. Light is the most useful static pattern to map onto that to produce the highest resolution. Well, I think I think what we could then say is we could translate light to be. We're using the word light here both in the context of its physical manifestation, but also the experience of it. So when we say enlightenment, we are talking about um, seeing things clearly and seeing, you know, seeing everything or seeing beyond yes. or seeing you know, in, the, in this highest resolution. When, and then in darkness, uh, that's the, the emotional state of being completely without resolution and without resolution, it's, you know, terrifying. Yes. And then when we think about light in the, in the context of, you know, a star emitting light, and then everything orienting itself towards the, let's say, the physical manifestation of light. We're talking about it as a, as a, let's say, a an attribute of physical space. Mm -hmm. But what underpins all of those interpretations of light? The emotional, the intellectual revelation of enlightenment, the the biological capacity to orient ourselves in the universe through sunlight or through daylight. What underpins yeah. all those is. The metaphysical idea of of not witnessing again, but but that, it's what governs all of them is is understanding or is it's like it's like even with Bitcoin and, and and when we talk about the idea of price signals, yeah, we're talking about pure price signals. So it's like pure light, you know, because it's it yes. It, maybe all of these things, what they have in common, the abstraction that underlies all of them, is is let's say clarity of of use or clarity of community like i guess it's value it's like yeah it's yeah, yeah the more the more uh I, I guess true the signal is right like so there's an there's an intention and then that intention is converted into action and then that action is propagated out to the rest of the world via the medium whether it's light or price but when you obfuscate the light or the price, uh, reality cannot organize itself to the truth of the original intention. Yeah. And that's where pathology is born. Yes. And pathology is born in darkness. 100% pathology yes. is born in darkness. Pathology can operate in any number in any um, number of contexts. It can be biological pathology. It can be the pathology yes. of a cancer. Uh, a, can a cancer is pathological um, because it's, yes. it's, it is actually operating inside of the darkness of a closed system because a cancer is unaware right. it doesn't see the light of the larger context within which it's operating so it's like golem in the yes. cave as it were um right 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 yes but the the it's yeah it's take it's, again it's the it's the the totalitarian the back to cancer and totalitarianism it take it thinks this is its whole reality right i need to just grow but it fails to see what it's doing to the larger or organism context it's like a malfunctioning immune system um it, yes it, it, it because of limited visibility because of limited visibility yeah hey everybody as you've no doubt learned by watching this show bitcoin is the single most important asset you can own in the 21st century and one of the most important companies in bitcoin today is nidig nidig's mission is to get bitcoin into the hands of as many people as possible one of the ways they are accomplishing this mission is by empowering banks and financial technology companies to offer their own Bitcoin products and services. As a true game changer in the industry, Nidig is safely unlocking the power of Bitcoin for forward-thinking individuals and institutions alike. 
led by Robbie Gutman, Yen Zhao, and Ross Stevens, Nidig has absolutely exploded onto the Bitcoin scene recently and has quickly become a leader in this space. So whether you are a professional investor looking for asset management services or a company looking to white label your own Bitcoin product or service, consider Nidig your single source solution for everything Bitcoin. There's a, there's a book by a guy called George Lakoff and uh, Mark Johnson, written in the 80s, which I think you'd love. It's called Metaphors We Live By. And oh, I have it. I ordered okay, it. excellent. Yeah, well, when, when you read it, what's mind blowing is to discover that we think that metaphors are a subsection of language. What we don't realize mm-hmm. is that language is a subsection of metaphor. Right. Yes. Everything yeah. I, is a metaphor. I did this with Verveke the other day. Well, after watching his uh, his YouTube series, if you just listen to anyone talking about anything ever and just start counting the metaphors, it's constant. It's a constant stream of yeah, metaphor. It's yeah. insane. And and Lakoff describes com- in a compelling way um, the architecture of how metaphors are governed and he, he has a concept called embodied right. metaphor, which means that <clears throat> that we have to, in order to comprehend something, we have to turn it into an, embo- an embodied experience, into a sensory experience. Because yes. the, the raw apparatus with which we can conceive of the world is the sensory apparatus of our body, which means that even when we're yes. dealing with abstractions like love or complex ideas, yes. we have yes. to, uh, using the bridge of language, we have to exchange, this is the Logos idea, we have to take yes. these abstractions from the realm of the, the the let's say, heaven, and we then have to embody them in a form that can be, can make sensory, um, comp- can, be sent- can be comprehended in a sensory way. Embodiment of ideas, we use embodiments of articulations like up and down, above and below, um, light and dark, simply to be a... Yes a ruler or a or a or a meet not not a medium of exchange a weight like what, what was the expression you used earlier when you you weights and measures yes weights and measures weights and measures that 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 logos and language is how we weight and measure moral value using the orienting capacity of the body as an apparatus through which to see the world. Yes. Most of our language is oriented around the idea of visual sensory experience because it's the highest resolution value interpreter we have. I was going to say humans are unique in that way. You know, it's like us and predatory birds, most other animals use something else. Yeah. And if and if if uh, a bird was capable of, or let's, say, let's not say bird because birds also use, let's say if a bat sonar experience could probably uh, be similar experientially to, to the visual cortex because it would just simply be taking data and interpreting it as an experience. Um, yeah. But the variables would not be photons. It would be, you know, um, bouncing uh, Sound transmissions from, yeah. from contact with things. Yeah. If a bat was to have the capacity for higher level abstraction, if it had a neocortex, it would describe its 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 revelations uh, in a way that we as humans wouldn't be able to comprehend because it would use a, a metaphorical framework that we couldn't, Yes. make sense of right um, right so yeah because we don't have the organs no so we we are describing uh an impossible to describe I- idea of god using our sensory apparatus which is specific to our evolutionary channel right yes and this goes back to the the um uh abbott abbott book flatland when he describes what the experiential kind of realm of, of shapes would be when they're interfacing with different dimensions from one dimension through to fifth dimensions, yeah. um, the the experience of it would be literally would be invisible to us. We wouldn't be able to see it. Yes. Like right now, there could be quite literally conscious beings in, in your room with you, with ghosts, as it were. Yes. There could be ghosts from time in the room with you, in a manner of speaking. Yeah. And well, I haven't taken ayahuasca myself or DMT, but the people that do, they say your blinders are lifted and then you see all of these things around you, these other multidimensional organisms and whatnot. Yeah, um, I, I've done it I've done it a few times, ayahuasca, and I haven't had the same experiences of, as what I described, but one of the things that I did get a very clear experience of, it was like having experience being thrown at me without all of the user interface on top so it was like it was like looking at 
it was like looking at the blue screen yeah, when yeah, Windows yeah. crashes. And it was all it was all highly algorithmic, mathematically organized patterns of of color was what I experienced. Wow. And it was it was like hyper HD geometric patterns. Which suggested to me the 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 BIOS of the of the yes. psyche, you know. Yes. So I want to take this this home a little bit here. So the, the this idea of metaphor, it is laden in everything we do. Or even when we we're we're talking about light here. So you could say like supervision, right? The top down visibility of a principle over its constituents or the understanding. These are both metaphors. So to understand in a bottom up way, like to stand beneath and comprehend something bottom up, or even the word substance, Vivek, you made the point is a metaphor to stand beneath, substand, like understanding. Um, and so it's this confluence of the light like organizing principle and then the matter like organized constituents. And so I wonder if. And I'm just trying to, again, that play, that can't shake this idea of Plato's cave where all of physical reality, everything we observe, there's some metaphysical, it's the embodiment of some metaphysical principle interpreted properly. So I'm wondering if light is the analog or the shadow of dynamic quality. And the biological, the biological slash social layer is the intermediary between the frozen light of matter and the actual light, the, the dynamic light, if you want to call it that, of heaven, right? So this is like uh, life is the intermediary organism between heaven and earth, if you will, between light and matter. And then the intellectual level, here's what I'm not as clear, the intellectual level, level again, is this, uh, it's like heaven, it's the domain of principles or ideas, um, uh, it, it, it's constructed from information, right? And information, light, all of these things go hand in hand with as something transcendent of time. So I'm wondering if 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 we are the the people sitting in Plato's cave, looking at the shadows on the wall, right? If light is dynamic quality, matter is inorganic quality. Uh, biological and social layers are the interface between matter and light and the intellectual level is a form of light it's well itself um i'm way out on a limb here but just trying to it's almost like to use the 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 analogy of a projector a film projector Mm -hmm. the the projector Mm -hmm. bulb is dynamic quality and the static patterns are the film through which the light yes projects onto the wall yes 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 the inflect the the inflections of the light yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that would mean that the light is the source of everything. And it's yes. and, and, and then in that sense, pure light would be just as impenetrable as a black hole. Right. Because if a black hole is the antithesis of pure light, then pure light, you couldn't look past it because it would blind you. And black right. holes, you can't look past because then you wouldn't have um, the, the, the data stream of light itself yeah. to... to so it, they are the the, the two du- core dualities. Pure light um, and no light are the same thing. It's they're both zero visibility. That zero visibility is analogous to zero resolution. That's right. Resolution means to bring back, to return to a solution that was lost. Yes. And it is the word to God. It is the word for God. G H U T is to return. To return. To return. Yeah. And meditation is to return to the sinner. <laughs> Return to the center. Uh, there's resolution. There's remember. When we think about memories, oh, yeah. to remember yeah. means to it, a member is a unit is is a unified thing. It's a, a member. So when you remember, you're taking like Frankenstein. You're putting things back together again. Yes. And the same is true with uh, so there's resolution, remember, and there's recognize. When you recognize something, mm. you recognize it, which means that you reassimilate it mm. in the context of more information which is the same as resolution, the same as remember. Yeah. And that's where I think that, that the key drive of, of human participation is, is to be recognized. It's so fundamental. You want to recognize your value to, to, you can only have value in the context of other people. Right. So, so to be recognized, to be remembered, is, is a <laughs> indicator of, of that, your value, that you have value and, and to have value means you exist. 
because the very universe only arises due to this you know this reciprocal realization right yeah. there's there's, yes. there's, a, yeah. there's a conformity between observer and observed is the only way that anything actually exists so we are actually emulating that yes yeah and we and we can't we can't be confident we exist unless we're confirmed and recognized by someone else recognizing us so we're we're in this and and this goes back to piercing's claim yes. that that the value is the relationship that creates the objects and the subjects yes that's the primary the relationship the value is, is the primary yes the relationship is primary yes and what's a relationship it's exchange it's it's action towards exchanging with others yes and the ultimate expression of relationship is love which is also something that transcends time like light. So light maybe is, maybe it's not the analog or the shadow of dynamic quality. Maybe it's the shadow of, of love. And maybe the intellectual is the shadow of dynamic quality. Well, it, it, it appears that the experience of any form of, and this, this is a unavoidable trap of when you use the word to describe the word, mm -hmm. the, the, the experience of any form of enlightenment whether that whether that be love or whether that be a revelation, the experience of it seems to be it seems to manifest as a form of in, of, of of light based. You yes. have to use a metaphor of light to describe it. Yes. Um, but you know, to to going back to George Lakoff, I think that 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 aspect of the experience of light being primary is is so foundational that we we like I said before, language isn't a subset. Uh, metaphor isn't a sub category of language language is a subcategory of metaphor yes. so how we how we quite literally the words we use dictate what we can think about yes. Um, yes, yes and i don't know if you've seen i don't know if you've seen arrival by denny villeneuve i have seen it. it's a great movie um and that's called linguistic relativity that's a that's a well-studied scientific fact the language you speak or think in dictates what you can think which which is why have you have you watched the latest jordan peterson well not the latest uh, the, the jordan peterson um uh conversation with the girl that escaped North Korea. Yes, it's amazing, yeah. And and there's that section where she said that they literally did not have a word for love. Right. Like so so they couldn't even fathom. They I don't think they had a word for sex even. They yeah. didn't even have they didn't even have a word for I. Everything was we. Yeah. So the state prohibited right the 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 logos from expanding into that community. Yes. And by 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 prohibiting the linguistic base, that meant that the optionality yes. of 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 exploring higher ideas and concepts was yes. quite literally out of bounds the freedom was robbed from them when the language was taken the fiction of society sabotaged the its individual elements right and try to just put try to make group identity superordinate to individual identity by removing the intermediate terms between individuals like love and sex yeah, and and the, the the that intermediary feature of language is the means of exchange. Yeah. So so you, the language is is yes. the bridge of exchange. Yes. If you take it away, then you yes. you quite literally cripple. And this is why every aspiring totalitarian has to control media, right? He has to control the voice of dissent, but also equally, if not even more importantly, they must control the media of exchange, which is money. Yep. And, and when you control the medium of exchange and you control the media of exchange, then you are controlling quite literally the minds of the people. And the, and the last yes. thing to add into that mix is you need, ideally, you would want biological control uh, of yes. the actual biological entities, such as, I don't know, vaccines. And experimental um, so gene therapy distributed via, as a vaccine. As a vaccine, which will change the potentially the biological uh, tendencies of, of the individual unit. Um, right. But... Uh, so, so with the, the Lakoff thing, so um, he, he his claim is that you know our minds work in metaphor by default, and language is is effectively an expression of those metaphors. It's the, the logos is effectively the demonstration of the metaphorical ideas being embodied. Yeah. So, language is the result of metaphor, uh, and if you trace back any of our language, you find that it's all just met, it's all metaphorical. So even for example, he, he, he categorizes them. So we have container metaphors, uh. which is that we as, as human bodies are familiar with the experience of being in that room. So you're in that room right now, right? Uh. You're, uh, so for example, 
you can be in a room, but we would also say, if I was to say I'm in a room, I would also say I am in trouble. As in, trouble is not a physical space, but the experience of, you know, you need to mm, um, trouble, demonstrate yeah. you're in yeah. trouble. Yeah. Or when you're, you would say, um, you know, um, this person is in a coma. Yes. Or they're coming out of a coma as right. if it was a physical space. Yes, yes, yeah. But you can't you can't you can't mix the the metaphors. So, you know, he he entered a state of panic. Um, right. and right. even, you know, a state is a metaphor in that context. Yes. There is no state of panic. There is no state state is an abstraction, it's a metaphor because there is no such thing as a state. Right. The state doesn't exist. It's a fiction. Right. Yes, exactly. So so it's weird that in that if you say he entered a state of panic, you're using multiple metaphors there. You're yeah. entering something which is physical. It's a state which has no physical representation and panic is an emotion. Yes. Or there's personification, for example. So you say this fact argues. Well, mm. facts don't argue. Right. They don't have any they don't have any personage yeah. whatsoever. So why would you say this fact argues or cancer finally caught up with him? Yes. As if cancer was physically chasing somebody uh, or his yeah, religion right, right. tells him that is that it is bad. And this goes yes. back to our idea of totalitarian states. Totalitarian states personify themselves as active uh, entities. So they, they first yeah. say there's a leader and then the, the state land. tells you something. Yep, the motherland, the fatherland, and yeah. the state tells you what to do and it, and it takes on physical form in yes. metaphorically. And then idea, ideas of people, you know, science, you could say science is still in its infancy. Yeah. That idea will live on. That idea died in the middle ages. Hey guys, I hope you found this episode valuable. At the What Is Money Show, we are striving to deliver the most valuable knowledge possible in each and every episode. However, as Aristotle said, the purpose of knowledge is action, not knowledge. So I hope you're deriving some useful knowledge from the show, and I hope it's improving the actions you are taking in your life. Speaking of action, if you want to dive deeper into the big ideas explored in this show, please sign up for my newsletter titled The Freedom Analex at breedlove22.substack.com. Also, have you bought your tickets for Bitcoin 2022 in Miami yet? If not, it's your lucky day as I am giving away 10 million sats, which is roughly 4,000 US dollars to one lucky person who buys a conference ticket through my affiliate link. My affiliate link can be found on my Twitter profile at breedlove22, um, which also has a link. My Twitter profile has a link to my link tree, which you can also visit my link tree directly for links to all my work, including Bitcoin 2022 affiliate cells. My link tree is l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e backslash breedlove22. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys watching the show. I hope you're finding some valuable knowledge in the What Is Money show, and I'll see you back here again next time.